Good morning and happy Friday, everybody. Thank you for coming to the DLE Breakfast Club. This is our second Breakfast Club event of 2021. We are very excited for you to be here. My name is Danielle Sanders and I'm with General Dynamics Mission Systems. To start us off, I'd like everybody to type in your chat box their name, your title, your company, and where you're joining us from. We always love seeing where everyone is from. I know today we have some people here from Brazil and from all over Massachusetts. I know we have some people who are dialing in closer to the West Coast. And so thank you again for joining us and welcome. We're very excited for our program today. A quick review of our ground rules. Please keep yourself on mute when you're not talking. Utilize the chat feature. We often have some great conversations that start in there. And whenever you do talk or come off mute today, please state your name and company when we open up for questions and exchanges. And with that, I'd like to start by introducing our speaker today. Carol Chavetta has 25 years experience in the entertainment industry as a strategic marketer. She's based out of Northampton, Massachusetts, with her strengths and leadership in identifying, developing, and, ad and advancing diverse top talent. During her 10 years leadership role as Chief Marketing Officer at Blue Man Productions, Carol ushered this iconic brand into a new 360 marketing campaign that fueled global expansion. She created a digital footprint, put blue chip brand partnerships in place, and launched her new operations in North America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. Her career portfolio oozes with achievement as a strategic advisor and interim marketing executive who defined and advanced the images of eminent brands such as M&M, MasterCard, Travelocity, Visa, BMW, American Express, Absolute, and more. As the executive director of domestic marketing for Disney Theatrical Productions, Carol was the creator of the Disney and Broadway campaign that continues to fuel the success of this business. Please help me in welcoming Carol to the stage as she talks about virtual public speaking and leaderships in times of COVID-19. So I went and I polled 15 leaders in my industry, president, uh, uh, executive director of the public theater, the SVP at Disney Theatrical, made people who owned companies and said, how has your leadership style changed in 2020? And you know, surprisingly, I thought, I, for, surprisingly, because they were all so busy, a lot of them wrote books on, sent me these long emails. They like really thought about it. And from all of these 15 people, I was able to call down what uh, six key points that I kind of wanted to, sh I wanted to share with you to be the topics of our conversation today, because really, you know, I'm just sharing these ideas and then it's for all of you to take and run with it. So the first thing is to, um, the first point, and I think that Danielle's going to make something appear on the screen, is to be authentic and show vulnerability. Because it's, it's, it's different now. You have to, what um, my friend Andrew said, you have to bring your human to work in a way that is very different than before. You can't just walk into a room, do this, and, and you have to lead by example which leads to the next slide, which is you really have to scan the room, um, scan the screen. It used to be that we read the room. You'd walk in and, and I have led teams from all over the world. I've had conference calls with you know, 60 people, all different languages on the phone and virtually. And it's very difficult to go, okay, what are they saying over there? But now that we're on a screen, you have to really scan it. And I've been in a lot of groups where I can see someone's retreating and that I need to pull them out. It requires a different kind of proactive energy. You need to initiate conversations. And this is a big one that'll go, that is almost the key thing you need in leadership. You really, especially in these times, you really need to listen. Which brings us to the next point. Kindness and humanity are paramount. We're dealing um, if in classic trauma, when you're dealing with trauma victims, um, the most important thing a trauma victim feels is that they're not seen and hurt. We have to realize that every single person pretty much in our world has been traumatized by the virus in some way, whether they're afraid personally, whether they're, um, they have relatives or, or just the fact that they're indoors all the time. 
So we're dealing with, we're leading groups who are traumatized in some way. You know, I think there'll be studies in the years to come about how this virus affected people. I have an 18 year old daughter and I worry all the time, what is her generation gonna be like having spent a year? Um, Cause you know, the year anniversary of lockdown will be in March. Um, and I worry about that all the time. And, you know, I, you know, so what you need to do is really see and listen to the people that work for you. You and, 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 and as I talked about earlier, you really need to scan the screen and you need to draw people out. I, um, I have a, a person who leads an organization and she has um, a person that works for her who is incredibly scared about the virus, afraid of getting it, just, you know, beyond afraid. It took a long time for my friend to be able to pull out of Emily what she was feeling and realizing finally that she was just plain scared was she was able then to figure out ways to manage her that felt more comfortable and more open. Um, the next thing is, um, and this may be for, for me a lot, is that you have to be consistent and you have to do regular check-ins. I, um, you know, I also have a management style. I like my team around me, you know, because I would have my graphic artist next to me and we would talk all day long. And, you know, sometimes our staff meetings would get pushed around because we talk so much. You can't do that in these days because, you um, your, your team is alone sitting on their, in their living room. They need that connection with you. So they need that stability, consistency, and the regular check-ins. And I feel like that's really important. So the next slide is you need to deliberately build in spontaneity. Um, we, what we've lost, we've lost a couple of things. We've lost that really important thing at work called the water cooler chat, where you'd stand at for those of you who are older, you know what I'm talking about. But you'd stand at the, you'd stand and talk about, hey, what did you guys see Queen's Gambit? I mean, have you done this? Have you done all that? All of that kind of social stuff has kind of gone away. And so you have to build it in. You have to build in that conversation. Another thing we've lost, which is incredibly important, is you know how you would get so much work done while you were waiting for a meeting to start and so much work done as the meeting was over and you're walking out the door, all of that's gone. So you need to figure out ways to build that in. Um, I know a company that schedules coffee breaks and people can join or not join and it's just a time for them to connect. And um, I think, it, and you know what? They always have people come, whether it's an assistant to, a, to an executive, they always, and at those, it's, there's no um, hierarchy. There's no, it's just standing around talking about, you know, Schitt's Creek or what they watched last night or, or the Super Bowl or anything that comes to mind, that's what they're, they're, um, they talk about. And that's really important because Part of work is that social, social ability, if that's even a word. And, and because we're all on it virtually, you lose a lot of that. And the last slide is you have to be hyper aware of your virtual presence, your background. I've had long talks, you know, I've been interviewing for jobs and my virtual background's really important. You have to look at your, you know, when I'm in, when I don't have front lighting, you have to, uh, you know, as my friend Andrew said, I have to up my game. You know, I can't just drag in and get out of bed and go, you know, he goes, I have to have the ability to look nice and presentable. And, you know, granted my waist down, I have flannels on and my slippers, but you, know, you wouldn't know that if I didn't tell you. So, you know, but from the way I have, you know, makeup and I, I have done something to make myself look professional. And those are my six tips that, and like I said, I called that from leaders around in my industry. And um, these seem to be the salient points that kind of emerge from all of what they said. But I think the key thing of all is you need to be vulnerable. You need to listen. You need to really look at, uh, I remember I was in a meeting with someone 
who I would probably say didn't have a high level of emotional intelligence. And he said, I can't, it's impossible to read people on screen. I can't see if they're, what they're feeling. And I'm like, then you're not really looking because people's faces, you can tell if someone's disengaged, you can tell if someone's retreating, you can tell if, you know, and, and you have to really look. And that requires pro, a proactive energy that is not as needed when you're in person. And you know, the thing is, is that I don't think the virtual world's really gonna go away. I think that, um, that um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I think that, you know, employers are looking at different, you know, once the virus is over and we return to normal and I use air quotes because I don't think they'll ever be, you know, what we used to think of as normal. I think employers are gonna look at how they run their businesses. They're gonna say, do we need all that overhead for an office? I, I, I um, produce and run a gala every year. And it's, um, you know, a chairman, me and the fundraiser. And we have, um, uh, 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 you know, a committee of like 25 people. And they're all, they're like older donor women, just to be really honest with you. And they, um, the meetings were always dreadful. Half the people would be on the phone, they couldn't hear. Other people would be in the room, they would dominate. We, this last gala, which was during the summertime, we had to do a virtual, we did it all on Zoom. And after it was over, I was like, we will never do another committee meeting in person. This was way more efficient, way, way, way more efficient because everybody was on equal footing. Do you know? Because the people on the phone, they're like, this is what they're doing. I can't hear you, you know? And, and so it was a much more efficient way to run the meeting. So, so I'd like to um, reconvene with a mini round robin. And the theme is, what is the one thing you're going to do today? Out of everything that you've learned, what is the one thing that you can change and start on today? So I'm gonna look at um, the participant list because I know some people may move around on me. Um, and the first thing I wanna take away is Katie shared some really great advice about moving from room to room. And I am definitely gonna start moving myself. I'm in the same spot every day and you pointed that out to me. So I'm gonna take an action to start changing my environment and being aware of my surroundings. Um, let's see, Cheryl, would you like to share? Hi, Kaylee, thank you. Um, I guess one thing that I would take away from this um, is what would focus on the, the authenticity that is needed um, in a virtual environment. Um, this, this is something that is constantly being brought up um, as something that's important for young professionals or even um, what we like to call young leaders. Um, like that's important for, for our company. Um, and I honestly can say that in my conversations with some friends that I have, that's one of the reasons why they tend to leave their jobs is because they feel like there's always a smoke screen that is being presented to them. There is a lack of transparency that, that exists. Um, and as someone who's looking to, to start my own company, um, I realize how important it is to, to kind of make sure that people understand my why and understand um, my purpose and to just be, be real and upfront about it. So that's something I've taken away from this. Very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. That's great feedback. Lucas, would you like to share? I am definitely, uh, hi everybody, I'm Lucas. I'm definitely going with the same as you, Danielle, being aware of my surroundings. I've, I was talking about that on, on our breakout rooms uh, because I think, uh, and uh, Carol said something really interesting. She, she said, uh, pay attention to the light uh, and everything. I never pay attention to that. I do think a lot about being vulnerable and showing my humane uh, uh, side on meetings and everything, being expressive, but I never think about the lighting, the environment, or 
I don't wear makeup, so I never think about that too. <laughs> So uh, I think this is really interesting. It's, it's a way to show yourself better and it helps everything, right? Fantastic, yes, I agree. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you. Ann, what's your one thing for today? Good morning. Uh, my one Good thing morning. for today is I was just struck in my group by um, individuals who had already worked online before the pandemic and then folks who weren't as comfortable, who had to adapt to it afterward. And I think I just want to take a little bit of what everyone said and kind of, um, kind of remember it for the future for any kind of jobs that I might apply for in the future and any opportunities that I have and kind of think about everyone's comfort level. If I work in a new place with people I don't know and think about what they're bringing to the table. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Katie, uh, no, I'm sorry. Kirsten, would you like to share your one thing? There was kind of a lot, but it was actually something you mentioned, Danielle. It was how you can hide yourself in a Zoom call. And I find myself focusing on myself so much that I lose a lot of my communication and looking at others and feeling more real. So if you wanted to share how to do that, I'm sure other people would appreciate it, but I thought that was a really great tip. Sure, well, I'll take the time right now. So if everybody looks at their, their person and you scroll on yourself on the top right corner, there are the three ellipses or the three dots. And if you scroll down on that, you can click hide self view. And so you're removing yourself and your own personal judgment from the screen. So it's helped me in some leadership discussions and thank you, Kirsten, for bringing that up. So. Um, and if you ever want yourself back, just click on anyone else's um, three dots and you'll get yourself back. Thank you for that. Katie, would you like to share? Sure. I think I most importantly learned remembering the value of what I'm doing every day and the importance of it and kind of building off of what you said, Danielle, about how I mentioned kind of breaking up where you always are. I focused on talking about how whether you're in a very small meeting or maybe a very big meeting, you're often always in the same space and that can hinder how you are interacting and your professionalism. And I think it's important just to kind of reflect every now and then, maybe you can't always change your location in your space and that's okay, but just to remind yourself, hey, I'm going into a more important meeting or um, a more casual setting and how to react in those different um, settings, even though you're maybe in the same physical setting. Yeah, absolutely. That's something that I know myself I'll be taking on and, and re-looking at because I feel it. I haven't moved all day, right? Um, so that's going to be, that's been tough. Kate, would you like to share? What's your one thing? Yeah. Hey, I'm Kate. Um, so probably again on like the screen type deal, right? So one of the things that we were talking about is how you really should be looking at your camera and trying to scan the screen at the same time. So I said I was going to go to five below and buy some stickers and like a little faces and put them up near my, my camera and maybe like one, an arrow saying, you know, look here or something, you know, so I would have that constant reminder to, you know, start looking up at the camera rather than, you know, at all, all of you all the time. Doesn't mean I don't want to scan, but more often up top, so. Fantastic, thank you. Julia, what's your one thing? Well, let me just add, Kate, that's, I, you don't need to go to five below. You can just put a little, um, anything there. I have a smiley face there next to it. And it's something I recommend to all you know, clients who are going into interviews, very important. Um, for myself, just, so I don't lead a group, but I see all my clients online. And this week, essentially, I had a couple of people reach out and just like, oh, could you just look at this document? And I was tempted to say, okay, I'll do that. We don't need to meet. And today reminds me, oh, no, it absolutely needs to start with a, a, a call in which I can we can all figure each other out before we actually start the work. 
as opposed to starting the work and then discovering that the that the base is not there and what now right so great great reminder per perfect timing too fantastic that is a great reminder thank you julia jonathan good morning would you like to tell us your one thing today Sure, my one thing, and I, of course, did my graduate degree online, so I have a lot of experience with this environment. So my one thing for today is to, we just need to take everything day by day, and learn to grow and adapt to this new technology. I love that. Day by day is definitely a great advice, especially because right now with COVID and Carol, as you pointed out, a lot of us are really feeling stressed or, you know, a bit, um, I think you were used the word trauma. A lot of us are feeling our own trauma. So great advice, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Jesse, would you like to share? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I thought that this, I mean, I think this entire session was very informative as I have like a new person starting who started like a week ago. Um, a lot of these tips are definitely things that I've quickly started practicing. Um, I was telling the group that I was with that like before, the, you know, before she started, my team was pretty much like a well-oiled machine. So we didn't need to like do regular check-ins. We would have like a weekly check-in and that was it. I find so much value out of just meeting for 30 minutes every morning with my new hire because one, it's helping get to know her a little bit more because we really don't need to talk too much about the day ahead, like for 30 minutes. So it's like 15 minutes of talking about what's the you know day ahead? What do I need? Like, do we need to get done? But then it's a lot of just like checking in, like, what did you do last night? Like, did you do anything fun over the weekend? You know, stuff like that. And so it's really nice because um, it's been, you know, really insightful. And she's actually already like sent me feedback being like, I really like these morning sessions because they're definitely informative. I feel like I have an idea of like what I'm doing today, et cetera. So. Fantastic. Well, really glad that that was something that we could, you know, bring back to light. And it sounds like you're doing a great job. And this person is having a fantastic experience as a new hire. So awesome job, Jesse. Dan, would you like to share? Sure. So I think my biggest one was um, deliberately building in the spontaneity, because in this environment, that is definitely a pretty big obstacle, especially a GD, right? Um, it, it is hard to have anything spontaneous because everything is pretty regular rigorous unless it's um you know uh you know all, all these meetings that we have every single day and they're all you know i've only been to the plant you know twice since i, I started working there in august and it to build in that spontaneity throughout the day even if it's just getting up walking around while i'm i'm talking if we're not doing a zoom meeting it's just something different to, to kind of keep the, the mind fresh. So that was definitely something I'm taking away from this. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I agree with you. Carol, how about you? Um, well, I just want to say a few things. One, front light is your friend. Remember that always. Hide self view is another one of your big, big friends. I do it all the time because you're only looking at yourself and, um, and then, and you can tell when someone's only looking at themselves because they keep adjusting their camera to think they'll get a better angle. And you know, that's, <laughs> you can just tell. Um, and I think Katie, what you said is really important is that regardless if, if you're in a big group or a small group, it's important to always look engaged and there's nothing worse than as a leader of a meeting, especially if it's a big meeting to see disengaged people. And um, it's very hard to draw everybody in, but it's a two way street. Do you know, I, I want to engage everybody, but everybody has to, you know, there's nothing worse than looking at a room that's like this when you know they're texting on their phone. Um, and, 
you know, I also want to say that appearance is really important. And there is a feature in Zoom where you can look, go on and look at yourself prior to the meeting starting so that you can see how you look and then you're, you're all set up. So you don't have to then, you know, often, sometimes I go on to a Zoom call. It's the first time I've ever really looked at my hair for the day. I granted a, a relaxed Zoom call, but, you know, that's really not a professional way to be. And I also just want to thank you because you all seemed really engaged. So I really had a great time and thanks for letting me share. Thank you, Carol. And we really enjoyed your speech today. So that was fantastic and great advice. Um, I'm going to finish off with Alyssa and then Linda. Um, I'm going to follow Dan on spontaneity. I've often lamented that I don't have these, I don't run into people anymore. I don't see people at Dottie's or, or anything and that I really miss that. Um, so I'm just going to start picking up the phone and calling people. One of you may be next. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Great. Oh, um, Kaylee, I almost, I didn't see your name. I've got the DLE experience. Did you want to share anything this morning? That may actually be Marcus. Oh, okay. Maybe it is Marcus. me, but I'm, I'm traveling to work. So oh. I can't speak. It's probably too loud right now. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Well, thanks for joining us, Marcus. And so Linda, I'd like to turn the stage back over to you and hear your one takeaway today. Well, I had many. By the way, the head self view was huge. Uh, I, huge discovery, as I said. Um, but Katie, you, you really enlightened me about that. And I wrote down, it's called the same place malaise. And it's the Zoom monotony of, of, of being sedentary with the same setting every day. And that mentally just really does play with you. Even maybe you have to change your shirt or your, or your sweater consciously for the next meeting, just to think maybe I'm in a different setting in a different room. And maybe you have to go through that deliberate and, and Dan deliberate is the right word. Um, I have a training program that I started uh, inspired by Zoom called Conscious Connectivity. And it's really helping managers deliberately building in every day methods and strategies for making small to big connections with their team members. And it, it has to be deliberately done because it is so easily forgotten. So I think, you know, as informal as this may seem, the deliberateness and the concreteness of even game plans and how you're going to have a, a meeting. Um, I know Kirsten talked about having strict agendas when she has a group of uh, 50 people. We have a daily game plan. I mean, we have a four page game plan of what happens in the course of one hour on the breakfast club. It isn't just serendipitous. And as crazy as that seems, I think it's so necessary now because you have to work harder to get attention, to keep attention and to engage. So um, I got so much out of this, Carol, thank you. You want, Carol, you wanna say something? Yeah, go. I very quickly wanna say that this does require so much more proactive energy. Yes. You have to build in moments in your day for self care, whether that's just getting up and walking yep. around your room or, you know, spending five minutes just going outside, you have to build that in because this requires so much more concentration. And if you're on meetings all day long, you'll be just like burnout. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, just even the mental, the physical energy. And again, I'm thinking about Katie being back in college of walking in between classes. I went to a big school, big, big campus, had to walk 10 minutes, 15 minutes of walk time, just mentally what that does. And now you got to figure, you got to build in your walk time that you used to have, even if you worked in a company and you walked in between buildings, if you worked for a large company. Um, so thanks. Uh, this was a great one. I think this is one that we should keep talking about because the evolution is one that is, I mean, I feel different than I did three months ago and six months ago with this um, still figuring new ways of commanding uh, sanity <laughs> and, and conducting business through Zoom. So thanks everybody. I wanna ask um, Danielle to help me with a couple things. So we have two more events this month that are coming up and next Friday, this is another topic that people have asked, let's do more relative to networking, net digital networking, Zoom networking. 
So Mike Smith, who is a management consultant, he's worked in the areas of innovation for a number of Fortune 500s. Mike's gonna be coming on on Culture Chat next, next Friday, noon. Register dle.dooley.com. Give us some advanced questions you want Mike to address, but that's gonna be another hot one. And then we do have something that's very relaxing coming up because people have asked for something just to have social time and kick back. We had a comedy club last month. We're gonna try music this month. We haven't gone down the entertainment venue, although Carol has, and we're trying with a musical cabaret. So Lita, Lita is a well-known popular artist actually has Berkshire roots, but performs a lot in Nashville. Please join us for this. We're trying something new. Let us know if you like this. We're willing to continue with the innovation. I mean, COVID has forced the restaurants, the gyms, everybody to get more innovative. So are we. So give us your feedback as we proceed down new venues on this. I want to thank everyone who volunteers to make this happen. Danielle is our leader on Breakfast Club. She puts an enormous amount of time and energy uh, up to last night, we're still going back and forth. And as I said, this isn't serendipitous. There's very deliberate actions that's, that, that take us through the course of a learning experience uh, in an hour. I wanna thank Lucas for coming into the DLE so fast. I mean, thanks to Julia in a month and now he's helping us with Danielle and planning our breakfast clubs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's great. I love that we're stretched beyond the states. Nothing better than that. Um, Dan, you was pitching in case we needed him last night or even texting Dan last night saying, could you help us out? I love the spirit that we're building in the community here. Jesse, it is great to see you. And I know Jesse has taken on a huge now leader role and good luck with you. You got a community here, Jesse, to always tap in and energize you. Um, and finally, Carol, I mean, you know, thanks for su suggesting this. Thanks for rallying. You were a breakfast club member who said, I want to take a lead one day and I want to do a, a, a presentation on something that I think the group would be benefiting from. So I invite anybody into that speaker circle. Danielle, you two issued the invitation as well. We welcome ideas. And finally, we do want to get your ideas on future programming on our poll. I know there's a link that, that's going to connect you to the quick poll. And if you take that quick pool, you will get that beautiful one chart that Danielle designed with the six tips that Carol, Carol uh, went through on virtual leadership. You'll get this. This is a great thing to use with your teams. Take it back, use it with your teams. It's all prepared for you and it looks like uh, professionally done because it is. It's a DLE asset, a DLE resource. So thanks everybody. Thanks to everyone volunteering. Um, I look forward to our next program because Danielle, you're doing great in our leader seat.